Hi, my name's Kevin and welcome to another video. In today's video, which is going to be part three of a, a, a mini-series I'm doing on building a small steam engine. It's called a Jerry Beam steam engine. Um, I've already done a couple of videos, parts one and parts two, um, which you, you know, if you haven't seen those, you obviously take a look at those and you'll see you know, the finished sort of result of the engine. Um, most of the parts I've made and we've got a few more bits and pieces to make. So in today's video, we're gonna have a look at making the slide valve. Um, it's quite a small fiddly part. Um, it's only eight, eight millimeters square by five millimeters thick. So quite a small, small valve. Um, most of that work's gonna be done on the um, milling machine. So anyway, we'll have a look at that. I've also uh, made a rack for the lathe, which I've been dying to do for ages, because um, all, my, all my cutters for the um, quick change, they used to be down here, and that was such a pain to keep grabbing them. So now I've got all those in view, and I can see all those. So I'll, I'll bring you in closer just to have a look at that. But anyway, we'll get on and um, we'll start machining this part, and uh, hopefully some other parts as well. Well, here's the rack I've built. Um, as I say, the, I used to have all my cutters down there on that shelf there, but that was a pain. Um, keep bending down, and then you had to try and find the one what you wanted. So now they're all just straight on the shelf, all in li line of sight, and I can see exactly what they are. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then I've got all my uh, measuring gear up the top here and some other bits and pieces in there. But anyway, that's made life a lot easier. And I've now got a decent light as well. Um, which is, makes it really bright across the top of the lathe so you can see what you're doing. Anyway, just move some bits out of the way. So here we are. Let me get out of the light. So here are the parts so far. Um, and we're now, like I said, we're now going to build the slide valve. So we'll get out of the light again. So we're looking at this part here. Let me just zoom in. We're looking at this part here. So like I say, not a very big part, so it's gonna be quite fiddly. Um, I'm gonna make mine out of steel, not stainless steel. Um, if I was gonna be running the little engine on steam, then obviously I would make it out of stainless because of rust. But I'm only gonna be running it on compressed air. So that's no problem, so I'll just make it out of steel. So anyway, we'll have a look at machining that, and then we'll see how we're gonna do that. Well, here's our part. Um, this just started out as a piece of square steel. Um, it's been machined down, so it's eight millimeters square. I'll just try and get this in focus. Um, it's just got to have a final polish, obviously, when I've finished, so it's slightly oversized, and then I'll just um, polish that up and bring that down to size. So this is the end we're going to use. Um, as you can see on the drawing here, the, focus, focus, this part here, um, it's only 1.5 millimeters wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave rather than cut this to size now I'm going to leave it to the full size The bar to the full size. I'm going to drill the hole in where it needs to be here And then once I've done that I'll cut it off then because that's going to be easier um, I haven't got a millimeter. I don't think I've got a million cutter small enough for 1.5 I'm pretty certain I haven't so what I'm going to have to do is um, Cut, drill the hole and then cut the piece off um, over size and then I'll, I'll use a um, slit and saw to you know to get me down to sort with the size what I need for that hole for that little slot so um, like I say we'll drill this hole here and then we'll we'll bring in the um, slot and cutter slot and blade to just finish that off Well, we've got the part in the vise. Um, first of all, we've just got to change over to the drill chuck. So we need to take the, we've got a MT4 or Morse Taper 4 taper on here. And this is an ER32 collet chuck, what's in here. So we're going to change over to the um, normal drilling chuck. And then obviously we'll be able to drill that hole. So I've undone the draw bar, so we'll just give that a tap. So there's the M4, MT4, Morse Taper 4. And then here's our drilling chuck. So 
on the um, spindle I've got a small slot, a small mark here and that's to line up with um, both this and the ER32 collet chuck and then I know that then that's um, going to be exactly, you know, the machine's then going to run true. So we'll just change the gears. And then, because there's no way of, well, there is a way of locking this, but um, I just used my hat, just dirt by hand. So, but the machine's in the lowest gear possible, so that'll pretty much lock it up anyway. We'll just give that a tighten. Move the tools out of the way. And we'll just need to move the head up. And just lock the head off. And then we're ready to drill the hole. So uh, I'll just find the 1.5 drill. Um, we'll probably, well we will, we'll mark it with a centre drill first. Um, otherwise, you know, if you're trying to drill a 1.5 mil hole into steel, it's easy to snap the drill bit. So we'll mark it with a centre drill and then we'll drill the hole. Right, I've just put a bit of mark and blue just on the end and what we'll do, I've now set the caliper up for um, 4 mil, so we'll just run a scribe across there and that's all we need to do there and then we'll just have a look and we'll bring the cutter down. Um, this isn't absolutely critical, this measurement, so as long as we're within that should be fine, well we'll be fine, so we are about there and center wise as well and that looks about right so what we'll do we'll just mark that hole and then we'll take the center drill out and we'll just put in a 1.5 drill So that's marked. And just grab a 1.5. These are jobber uh, or dormer drills, um, jobber drills, good quality drills, but they will still snap easy if you're not careful. So there we are, there's the hole drilled. So what we'll do now, um, we'll cut that off just over size and then we'll use the slit and saw to um, carry that 1.5 hole through to the end. Well here we are back at the mill. I did do the cut but I couldn't do it with a slit and saw because I didn't have one small enough. Um, I needed a 1.5 mil but the smallest I got is 2 mil. So all I done in the end was just cut that with a hacksaw and then just finished it up with a um, small diamond file with a yeah diamond file and um, just to smoothen that off. Right so what we do I've cut that slightly oversized so we need to now cut that in height. So I'll swap back to the milling cutter and then we'll take that down. I've got to reduce that by about a mil, something like that. So anyway, <clears throat> so I've undone the draw bolt and we'll just give that a tap. 
and we'll take the drill chuck out. And we'll put the collet chuck back in and we'll just spin the shaft round till we find our little dot for, for leveling up. And we have a dot also on the collet chuck. And so we'll just bring that into line. Spanner on this end, spanner on the top, and just give that a tighten. You don't need to over tighten those draw bolts because the, the taper will hold that in there um, just as long as it, you know, as long as you've got some tension on it. And we'll just drop the head down just to bring us a bit closer. And we'll just lock the head off again. We'll just use the fine adjust just to bring it down to where we are. And And what we'll do is we'll use the DRO. And we'll just lower that down until we start hitting the material, which is about there. Set Z to zero. And I know the piece is measured um, six mil, so we need to take a millimeter off. So what we'll do, we'll rely on the DRO just to take the just to machine that down to, um, you know, to take a mil off, and then we know we'll be at five mils. Oh, well, the battery packed up, so I couldn't show you the um, machining of the height, so, um, which is a pain, but never mind. Anyway, I've recharged the battery now, and um, so what we're gonna do now, we've just got a machine, a five mil square pocket, just in the top of this um, valve here, um uh, 1.5 deep so what we do we've set the dro up and um because obviously we want that five mil pocket to be right in the middle of this uh, eight mil square um piece so anyway we've got everything set up so we'll switch on we've only got a three mil cutter in here so we're going to have to be a bit careful so we'll probably just take you know a few passes and that so anyway well let's get this going <laughs>
that's not too bad we'll just have to tidy that up a bit so I won't do that on screen I'll do that off screen we just got to um, just take out you know the, where I've done the radius and that just take out the middle parts so anyway so that's all done right that took a bit of messing around just to get that sorted but anyway we're all done so here we are let's just see if we oh, will focus um, so here's the finish, well virtually finished, i just got to do a bit of polishing and whatever and um, I've just got to chamfer these edges here and here but I'll do those, what I'm going to do is um, just wait, get it, get the engine together and then um, just make sure, you know, before I start taking off too much, you know, it's always better to leave a bit on and then take a bit more off just to get that fine tuning, but as you can see there's the pocket so um, that's what will control the um, sort of steam, but in my case, compressed air. Um, and then obviously it, it connects at the back here. So like I say, it's just got to have a final polish and maybe just have a bit more of a machine, but I'm going to leave that until the engine's together and just see, you know, see what the tolerances are like. So anyway, so that's the slide valve done. So we'll move on to the next one.